What is up everybody? Welcome to this week's Jesse Spec YouTube video. This week we're going to be focusing on the Toyota GD86 and the Subaru BRZ platform in NA form. What are the gains did you get if you change your drop-in air filter by an aftermarket one, you install an unequal length header and or if you tune the car with a custom tune on the dyno. I'll be using Ecutech and my Dynapack dyno to give some facts and show you what are the true gains you can make by doing these mods and I should say this is not legal for street usage so do not do that on the street and without further ado join me and let's dive right into it. All right, we're in the warehouse. So let's dive right into it. So there are a few things that I want to do in this video. First of all, not only showing that mapping these cars actually brings something, but without even touching anything on the ECU. Does this kind of drop in filter make a difference? Do we gain anything even on a stock tune? That's the first question I want to answer. The second question I want to answer is how much do we gain and how much does it improve the drive feel and the torque curve by installing an unequal Tomei powered um, exhaust header? And the final thing that I would like to f show you is how much gain there is once we put both of these things and also map the car and see what are the gains in that perspective. So without further ado, join me and let's dive right into it. Okay, let's get things started, or I should say jack up the car first and then remove the wheels so we can put our hubs for the hub dyno. So usually when you install a Dynapack dyno on a car, you need to remove the wheels and then you're going to take these hubs and install them onto the lugs in order to have a one-to-one -one connection to the dyno and of course you're going to have to run the car in 4th gear or 5th gear on the 8.6 platform so you have the closest transmission ratio to 1. That means 1 to 1 with the engine. What's pretty incredible with this Dynapack system is the screws and the lugs do not need to be tightened as tight as the factory wheels should be tightened because basically there are way less constraints than a regular road usage and less vibrations as well. So this means that tightening it by hand, of course, with a solid big uh, spanner is mandatory. However, you can really, uh, you do not need to put 115 Newton meters of torque on it to tighten it because uh, since there's so little vibrations and ways of it to come loose in comparison to a regular uh, wheel on the road this actually really works really well and you don't need to go into too much effort of tightening everything to spec and removing it after is also less of a pain. the car is now installed onto the dyno now checking a few things as you can see here i have a new setup for cooling so we're gonna I have a tank of 250 liters of cold water that I'm bringing through these green hoses into the Dynapod so I can do more steady state tuning for longer. I should note that there is a stock catback on this car. The only thing, so the car at this moment is still 100% stock. And so let's get into the car now and start preparing everything for the dyno runs as you can see this is the cookie version of the GD86 of course very important always open the door when you're running a dyno because that is really dangerous and you can suffocate with exhaust fumes and it's very you don't feel it right away so take care of that so now after we're going to be going hard on the dyno, so open the water, make sure the pump is activated as well. Check that we have equal water flow from both hoses so we can see we're all good. And now we can jump into it and start checking the power figures of this car. The 
first step in order to do our base runs I will log the stock value so that's why I plugged in my Ecutec dongle connecting it to my computer and I'm just gonna do some logs of the stock power and the stock map how it acts on the engine management system to make sure the car is also running safely with the stock tune but also just to get an idea on how the car was tuned from the factory and just keep that as a reference. It's always good to have this information. Compare it later if there are some weird things going on in the tune. So now let's warm up the car. Quickly look in the maps. Make sure to log the values when we're going to do our first pulls and see if everything's running perfectly. I should also say that it's really important that you check the RPM that you read on your dyno and compare it to what the ECU is telling you because if you're not on a perfectly one-to-one -one ratio you will have discrepancies in the RPM and that will give you weird readings on your dyno so make sure to get the RPM information perfect. so we've gotten our stock figures we have roughly 173 horsepower at the crank with 180 Newton meters of torque in stock form stock air filter exhaust everything 100% stock and the engine is also almost brand new it's like 15,000 kilometers on the clock as it is Okay, so the car is supposed to have 200 horsepower, but honestly, in my experience, most of these GT86s go around 180 horsepower. That is a more realistic figure, and it's actually this car is totally in the norm, and that's going to be our base to see what mods we make and what they actually bring from there. Okay, so here we are, we've done our run, we've gotten the, our base run, and now let's install an Apex C intake panel filter. That goes into the stock airbox, so I'm going to install that right now, and let's go for another run and see how it works. Air filter installed. Let's see if there's a difference. I just realized there's a HKS one in it already. So I'm pretty interested to see what's gonna happen from a performance point of view. Let's take a look at it.
interesting. So the red line is what we had with the HKS filter and the pink line is what we picked up with the Apexi filter. That's odd. I thought the HKS one was also an aftermarket one and it should have increased the power. Well, looks like the Apexi actually performs better. And people who know me actually know that I really prefer Apexi filters than the HKS ones. And for one very simple reason, a filter, all things being equal, is how much filtering surface you have. And the HKS one is just a flat sponge, whereas the Apexi one, it's an undulated design, which means that they increase the surface by roughly three times. Which means that when you increase the surface, you can increase the flow for equal filtering capacity. So this is just one simple reason why I prefer Apexis over the HKS. And this actually translates in an increase in horsepower when you look at the data that we retrieved during the power run. Which could show a power increase of roughly 5 horsepower from run to run. So now that we see that the filter has brought something, let me show you this work of art, Tomei powered, unequal length exhaust header that we're going to be installing on the GD86 and the unequal length one has the merit of being able to sort of smoothen the torque dip and also give you a really nice boxer sound since it's unequal length it will actually change the sound of the engine which really makes it nice and it really gives you the well-known Subaru rumble that we all love so that's a good mod in my perspective so here you can see the difference between the stock one that is an equal length and the, the Tomei one that is an unequal length one. And so the first step in installing it is actually swapping over both AFR sensors. So the first one is the wide band and the second one is a narrow band one. Make sure to swap those over in the correct place because if you mix them up, you're not going to be able to plug them in and it might actually create problems so make sure to get that right tighten them to spec and then after we're going to be removing this brace that they put from the factory so the goods can be shipped easier this long aluminum brace that you can see here just going to remove that quickly and then we're going to install the header onto the car So here you see a heat shield that is made for the oil pan that you have to stick on it in order to prevent the headers from actually heating your oil. There's also some sealant that is delivered with it. And let me show you quickly what it looks like when you install the heat shield onto the oil sump. This is really where the header is going to be passing so it's important to protect it from heat radiation. It will actually otherwise heat your oil uselessly which is really not beneficial for your power gains. So let's take a look and see what this baby looks like once it's, once it's installed. It is really a work of art, this header, and I cannot wait to actually show you the improvements of the car once we tune the car as well with the new header. And also just installing the header will activate actually an error code because the there is one catalyzer that is deleted through this so of course this is not legal for road usage but you have to change something in the tune so that the ECU doesn't throw you a default code regarding that you can hear that one major difference with the unequal length header is that you actually finally get a real Subaru-esque boxer sound which is also a big plus point of course from a sound perspective. So in spite of the error code that is going to show off, I'm just going to deactivate that error code, which is basically the efficiency of the catalyzer since it's been removed. There's no point in having this error code. So without before tuning the car, let's give it a run and just see 
if there is actually a performance gain without a tune by using an unequal length header on your Subaru BRZ or GT86. As you can see I'm monitoring the AFRs as well through my dyno just to make sure that the cars were running perfectly. I've been running out a little bit of time so I decided to tune the car because I had other customers waiting for me. So here let's che check the graph. So the green and gray graphs are how much the engine got when it was tuned with the unequal length header and the red curve is basically only with the unequal length header. What I also saw is that AFRs were off pretty severely when the the car was running without a tune and the unequal length headers so honestly I would not recommend to drive around without having the engine tuned when you put the unequal length header in it because it does really make you run in with some lean AFRs which is really not healthy for your engine so all in all let's check how much gains we made the gray and green graphs are basically the top power we managed to get at the end of the tune so 201 newton meters roughly for 203 horsepower that is a decent increase of 21 newton meters and 30 horsepower which is really a noticeable gain of roughly 15 percent all right we're back in the office so how did you like this video it was a very factual and actually interesting video to make because there's a lot of BS, to be honest, going around on the internet. And I really wanted to show you uh, what we can do once we do this. Uh, I'm not the best NA tuner in the world. And those aren't maybe the best parts in the world. It's maybe not the most... Uh, it's, it's maybe not the healthiest GT86 FA20 engine in the world. But you could see that there is roughly like a 15% yeah, roughly a 15% increase in torque and horsepower, which is not negligible. So you will definitely feel that the car picks up way faster and it's a breeze to drive. It's really modifications that I feel are really worth it. My customer who brought the car did not want to change the catback. So we're running a stock catback still. So I would look into that, put a different catback, something that flows a bit better 
and there's probably a little bit more horsepower to be picked it up in that way so anyway there's a lot more potential there's a lot more things you can do you can go on ethanol you can do all kinds of other things but anyway this was a really interesting thing and no disrespect intended to hks but it is weird that we picked up at least five horsepower if not even more with an apexi air filter customers of my shop know that because i'm convinced i prefer much more apexi air filters than other brands but anyway so this is really an awesome subject i'm passionate about these kind of things because i think it's super interesting and i hope you guys enjoyed this video and make sure to like to subscribe and if you know a guy or a girl who has a gt86 or subaru who doesn't know what to mod first make sure to share that video with them that would help me tremendously and i hope i will be able to crack the <coughs> 1000 subscriber mark that i'm fighting to get the last hundred subscribers are really hard to get but i hope this video will contribute so anyway enough blabbering thank you so much as usual for your support and i will be seeing you next week peace <laughs>